About 150 years ago, there was an experimenter named Boyle, and he came up with his law for gases that sounds pretty intuitive to the rest of us. If you take a gas in a certain volume and pressurize it, increase the pressure, what you've done is that you've decreased the volume. So what did Boyle do? He took the pressure of a certain amount or volume of gas, and he kept the moles constant of that gas in the sample, and he changed the volume, and then recorded the pressure. Whenever he took the pressure and the volume and multiplied them together, he got a number. But if he changed it to a different pressure, and it responded with a different volume, or vice versa, when multiplying the pressure and the volume together, he always got that number again. Well, of course, it's a constant, K. And so he said, you know, that also means that if you have an initial pressure and volume of, two, of a gas, and you want to know what its final volume is going to be after you change the pressure, well, you could use this formula. And ladies and gentlemen, that's Boyle's formula right there. P1V1 equals P2V2. Very, very convenient for being able to find an unknown in pressure or volume. When you keep the temperature constant, that's Boyle's law, at constant temperature, the pressure and volume of a gas vary, now get this, they vary with each other indirectly. Now, what does that mean? Look. That means as one goes up, the other goes down, right? Okay, so if you're going to graph Boyle's Law, pressure versus volume, what do you do? Well, as one goes up, the other goes down. So a lot of people think, well, why don't we just, uh, why don't we just do uh, something like this, a straight line this way. So when the, the pressure is going down, the volume is going up. Oh, a nice idea, except for one thing. If you cross that y or x-axis here, what you're going to do is encounter a zero for pressure or volume. If you get a zero for pressure or volume, you do not get the constant k anymore. So what does that graph actually look like? It's a curve where you have asymptotes, really, <laughs> along that y and x-axis here. And that's the graph for this. If you actually graphed, real quick, if you wanted to make that a straight line, you could make the relationship this. One over the volume, and you can check this anytime you want to, if you graph one over the volume and pressure with each other, then you will get that straight line relationship that you've been looking for, and it's actually a positive slope. Here's a question that employs Boyle's Law. You got 200 milliliters of gas, and the pressure inside of that container, closed container, that has 200 milliliters in it, is 100 kPa. And now we take the volume and we go to 100 milliliters. So what have we done? We've taken a 200 milliliter container and we've gone and squeezed it down into 100 milliliters. What's the pressure now? Hey, the pressure's gone up, hasn't it? How much has it gone up? We use Boyle's formula to find out. I think we probably know what the answer is already. So, P1V1 equals P2V2. P2 is what we're looking for, the new pressure. What does it equal? P1 times V1 divided by V2. You divide each side by V2. Write the new formula. Then plug in the number. So, P2 equals this over here. That's the way you do it properly. Now, 200 is the original volume. I actually kind of reversed those, haven't I? It's okay. So, there's your volume, there's your first pressure, there's your new volume, and of course, when you do the math, you get 200 kPa. The pressure goes up. The pressure doubles. Well, if you take the volume and you half it, the pressure's going to double as long as the temperature remains constant.